thank you for inviting me. I am uh, also apologize for my cold, so I hope you'll bear with me, that, and I hope my voice is going to carry well enough for today. For nearly, nearly two decades after the digital revolution in photography, it has been noticeable that uh, more and more seek the magic on paper. An instant image on a screen is just too automatic. My own return to the darkroom came from a wish to be back in control of and manually control created, um, manually created uh, images. As a conservator, I also believe that a lot can be learned from about the process by just practicing it. Any faults which happen in a manual process um, are likely to leave a trace which should not be mistaken for damage in conservators' condition reports. Many years ago, after I moved to Norway, I became aware of the Norwegian pioneer of photography, the mysterious Mr. Winter. Now, if you said that Bayard was uh, was uh, an unknown uh, figure, then uh, Winter is probably n the mon mi minority of you have heard about. At the time, in the 1980s, nobody had seen any of Winter's work in Norway, and all his legacy seemed to have been lost after he died in 1851. What was left, however, was evidence that he wrote in uh, newspaper articles and his own publication about his light images that he printed in 1845 in Norwegian and in German. This little book has been reprinted as a facsimile and became my companion for many years to come. I'm mentioning it and I will return to it later on because uh, I would like whoever is interested in that might contact me about my um, attempt to have uh, published a uh, translation into English. It's already been translated by me, but uh, it's not yet uh, um, in print. So <coughs> the color type is back. And say hello to uh, Hans Tegerwinter, the distant cousin of Bayard and Talbot. Since time is, is short, I will only mention that he invented three processes on paper, one in the summer of 1839 uh, and two in uh, 1842. The first of these processes is close to Bayard's direct positive, while another very similar to the color type of Henry Fox Talbot. If you are interested, just let me know and sign your name or, or send me um, an email about the book. One of the first lessons that I learned uh, from my exercises was that I needed to find papers which were suitable. Being a paper and photo conservator, I found myself in a position of advantage, I thought. So anyway, I would know what to avoid. So the first tests made were on white um, conservation quality papers like silver safe and photo safe, later to be abandoned. Um, I'm not going to, to dwell on uh, Winter and Talbot, but this is just uh, to mention, and uh, there are similarities and differences. However, both uh, um, Talbot and Winter, Winter's uh, color type processes are like um, are still in um, you know in the in the um, um, category we we could call the wet like a wet plate. They needed to be exposed while still wet and developed before they dried up. Therefore, the color typist needed to be close to his chemicals and his darkroom. A great advance made by Le Gray in 1850, invent who invented the wax paper color type, could be used dry. It was less sensitive, but could be used within one, two, maybe a few more days, allowing for some traveling. I had little success with uh, this method, but I tried another variation of his um, process, which was published by Reverend Lawson Sisson in 1859. The best results, it should also be used, for best results, it also should be used within 24, 48 hours. The sensitivity was said to be about 30% uh, higher, and. Uh, However, enough to make uh, this portrait that I made in open shadow for about 45 seconds. This is a couple of friends who just got married that year, and I promised they would have a color type. 
from me as a gift. The next process also brought back to light um, by Richard Kinnan Jones, who is an uh, active photographer today, was the process of uh, Arsène Pellegrin. The conservation papers worked, but not very well. And I was guided to look at the range of commercially available layout pads and try the Canadian Beanfang Graphics 360 and clear print design vellum 1000. These papers were thin and could be used for color type since they survived the many preparations and wet paper handling. All these were obviously pure enough to avoid chemical conflicts. The paper which I finally found to be both reliable and suited my preference um, for the look of it in the end, seen on the salted paper print, uh, was the product of uh, Canson, the Canson marker layout. These papers are thin and semi-transparent. The two images that you can see on the right were I made in uh, Spain, in a small town called Torox. And two images here are the same scene, <coughs> photographed one after another within five minutes. The top one was on, um, prepared on uh, Canson Opalux, which is a transparent paper, while the bottom one was on the Canson marker layout paper, the 70 gram variety. Um, you can see the obvious uh, uh, difference and in my personal opinion, the very transparent paper is so transparent that it could just as well be like uh, glass. So I stick to the Canson marker layout paper. Here you can see the pads, which are commercially available also in Norway. And I put a piece of black uh, cardboard underneath the first sheet of these pads so you can see the translucency of the paper quality. The one on which is in the middle, sort of, or left of, yeah, the biggest one, the most yellow one, is the bean fang. The middle one is clear print, and the console marker is on the right. Um, the first step of the Pellegri process was the iodization. It was done in a solution of milk serum, or whey in English, in which potassium iodide, potassium bromide, and iodine, as well as lactose, were added. Free iodine was added in order to tint the uh, starched papers and make any faults visible. And you can see that I was using a variety of iodizers since I was already practicing the other techniques, and uh, I was using also the Dr. Keith iodizer for the Sisson process, which involves the turpentine and wax, pre-waxing. But to the left, you see the, the whey solution. It's not really a clear solution. And the tinted papers in the middle, it's because of the free iodine, which reacted with the potassium, um, um, with the starch in, uh, in the French uh, council marker paper. So, <coughs> but uh, the long life of the Pellegrini sensitized papers were due to the great care taken to wash out any undesirable leftovers of chemistry added to the papers before exposure. The sensitization is the decisive and most demanding step of the process. Any mistakes made will inevitably result in stains, fogging, or loss of paper. There are many immersion baths which is a risk when transferring a single sheet of wet paper from a bath to another on in the late hours in your darkroom. Uh, a batch of five to 10 sheets I found is, uh, and also <laughs> following Pellegri, is possible and advisable. The first bath is the silver nitrate, which is made to 10%. Uh, the many baths following silver nitrate are designed to remove any residual chemicals which could cause fog or staining of the color type. So later, the first two baths <coughs> are in pure water, each of 10 minutes, followed by a 1% solution of sodium chloride, 
this is going to form a milky precipitate with any silver nitrate, which did not react with the silver, um, with iodide and bromide in the paper. The milky salt is in fact silver chloride and it's not going to take part in the process. The salt introduced to the paper at this stage needs to be washed out. So this needs another series of three baths of 15 minute duration each. The in this picture, you can actually see the moment when uh, the iodized paper, one of those which were dark tinted, has entered the uh, sensitizer, and I just uh, snapped it the moment when it's changing the color. This is when you can see actually the formation of, of uh, silver iodide. And that's really useful. You see how fast the reaction is uh, taking place, and you see any faults that might have been in the paper. The final um, bath of this long procedure is the preserving bath designed to prolong the useful sensitivity of the paper. I'm not sure how much it really contributes, but I don't change a winning formula. We only modified it slightly. Yes, he, he, here's the, um, the image shows a few of sheets which were um, iodized without the free iodine. And of course, if you use the iodine in, this, in the iodization formula and the papers which were not starch papers, they would not take that tint. Okay, this is the summary of, of the process. So uh, the preserving bath is uh, really, um, okay, designed to prolong the useful sensitivity. And it's, uh, it's really, uh, adding inorganic, um, I'm sorry, organic uh, uh, content. The addition of gallic acid, as you can see, was in the formula I decided to avoid. As we all practitioners know that uh, gallic acid is very unstable, easily oxidized. So the exposure, as you can see, is a bit of a guess, but uh, an exposure table that was designed by my colleague Richard Kinnan Jones, based on the measured exposure values, is of good help. Um, and exposures can be made both in winter and in rainy weather, but there has to be just the an enough available UV and blue light. The shortest exposures I dared were about 30, 45 seconds in the summertime. Development can be delayed by at least two weeks, a huge advantage for the traveler. For development, Pellegrin suggested pyrogallic acid, which is fast, but a rather nasty chemical. So I preferred to use the traditional, but slower gallic acid, and I prepared according to Alan <laughs> Green's formula, which is in his uh, excellent book, uh, Primitive Photography, and uh, from a saturated solution in alcohol. It can be diluted and it forms a 100 milliliter solution. And a few minutes after the immersion, the paper is lifted out and a small amount of a catalyst is needed. It's a mixture of silver nitrate and, and uh, glacial acetic acid. Prior to that, no progress of, deve of development would be noticed. Now a sheet needs to be inspected in darkroom light every 10, 15 minutes to see the progression, if you dare to wait 10 or 15 minutes. A well-developed image is not just seen on the surface, but should be seen to be sort of moving into the paper structure, where it would be more stable. After about 60 minutes, the image should be fully developed, but if no fogging threatens, you can prolong it to two hours and even more. After a brief wash of five minutes in running water, the color type is placed in the first of two baths of 12% sodium thiosulfate, and followed by another 10 minutes of fresh, yes, the second bath of, of hypo. The image now is transferred to a running uh, bath of water, and um, the remaining hypo should be completely removed. This can be speeded up by using a sodium sulfite. The wet image looks always much thinner in density before it dries up. 
I will finish with uh, 10 examples of my color types and salt prints from the travels of the past 10 years, and they were all made with the Pellegrini method. Um, being alone doing these processes is a rather um, tiring um, and demanding um, exercise. So if anybody of you are, is willing to, to have a go at Pellegrini or any other color type process, uh, I advise you to take contact and become a member of the Color Type Society, which is uh, uh, just a group of people without any formal uh, um, structure and we meet every other year it has been um, uh, we have met three times every two years the last time was in oslo actually in last summer this is the bunch of people who were uh, participating and we usually organize an exhibition uh, connected to the uh, event and uh, visit museums and practice uh, photography the next meeting is going to be in parma Uh, the group in, uh, on Flickr is about 250 followers, but in practice it's only a, really a handful of people who are practicing and who have actually published the images there. The Facebook group has quickly grown and it is more of a, I don't know, a wider kind of uh, audience and it has um, 650 uh, members the last time I checked. Um, and um, I will finish just telling you one more word about Winter and um, that I have that translation uh, finished. And um, if you are interested, uh, please take contact. Thank you.